Hey there, this is Ravi Jalobos, and today I wanted to show you how to put together a jQuery mobile application in just a few minutes. This is gonna be a very simple list-based application. I just wanna show you how cool jQuery mobile is and how quickly you can set something up. So I'm gonna, so I'll start by creating a basic HTML document. This is just a normal HTML5 document structure. I'll call this thing list app. You can see the name appears right here. And then after this, what I wanna do is pull in my jQuery mobile base code. If you go to jQuerymobile.com, you go to the download section, you can see that right here, they tell you to add these three CDN hosted links to your application, and that's what I'm gonna do. So I'll copy that and I'll paste that in the head section that just adds the library onto our application. And I'll go ahead and save that. And I also have to add a viewport tag. So I'm just gonna add that in from a macro. And this is just a standard viewport tag so that things look properly on iOS devices. So what I'll do here is I'll add a header section. And the header section is just gonna have an H1 tag for a headline. And I'll just call this list app. And of course, if I'm gonna have a header section, I need to have, I need to have a footer section and the footer section is gonna have some navigation. My navigation is gonna be a list. And the list is gonna have three list items and they're gonna be links. So let me do a href and I'll type in a pound sign just to have something for now. And I can just copy this one a few times and my first link is going to be back to a, let's see, a home page. Let's call this photos and info. Okay. And so I'm also going to have an article. You could use divs and regular HTML tags instead of these, but these are a little bit easier on a demo. So in my article, I want to have some content. I have some images right here of some, of some dogs and some gummy bears. I'm, I don't have time to type all that content in, so I'm just gonna paste it. You can see that it's just a very simple unordered list, and the list has two items. And uh, in here we have an anchor tag, so it's just everything here, every one of the items is linked. And in those sections I have a heading for each one of the items, as well as an image, and finally a paragraph with a little bit of a description. So, so far, this is just very simple HTML that you're familiar with, and we're gonna now convert it into a list-based app. What I need to do is add a bunch of data attributes to the different tags. The way that jQuery Mobile works is you use plain HTML5, it knows to format them in a way that looks like native applications. So jQuery Mobile takes advantage of the data tag in HTML5 the data tag is a way to add additional data onto existing elements. So I can say data address equals and then type in an address, uh, or I can say data whatever and make up my own and then I can type in whatever I want and add bits of information to tags. So jQuery Mobile takes advantage of that and it has different kinds of data type attributes. So the first one you probably will know, will want to use is data role and there's different data roles. So one of the data roles is header. And if we take a look at that, that converted the top header into something that looks like, it's like it would be long in a native app. So if there's a header, there's also a footer. Right, and that converts our footer to look kind of like a footer. It doesn't really look particularly great. Now we'll improve that in just a minute. And let's go back to the top. And usually you have to use a data role content for the main section that just formats things a little bit better. So let's go ahead and make this into a list. So I could say to the unordered list, data role equals list view. And that immediately converts the list to the list view. And it did a whole bunch with just that one simple attribute. Notice that it resized the photos to fit the list items. It has like highlights. 
it added these little triangles that link to another page. It shortened the text of the description. So it added these three periods because these things don't fit on this width right here. So let me do something else here. I'm going to add a data filter and I'll say true. And this added a little UI element right here. If I type in something into that element, like I'll say G U M, it's automatically sorting the list and condensing it to have only these elements. So I do P I N for Doberman Pinscher, only the little dog shows up. If I take that out, I can see my entire list. So just like with a simple attribute, it added all this functionality onto an application. If I add a link and I'll put a pound sign here and I'll say, say home, notice that it adds a button. If I add another one, it automatically creates another button and it puts it on the other side. Let's go ahead and get rid of those. You probably want to make these links a lot better. I'll go over here to this footer nav and add a data role equals nav bar. And you can see that the navigation here is now divided into these buttons. That's pretty cool. Notice it's kind of attached to the end of this section right here. So what I also need to do is change the footer to be a data position equals fixed. And what that's going to do is push it all the way to the bottom. Let's go ahead and add some icons. So you could actually do that with data icon and jQuery mobile comes with a number of icons. And so I can put in a home icon right there just by adding a data icon home. And for photos, I can do a grid. And uh, for info, there's actually an icon called info. I want to show you how you do additional pages. So right now, this entire thing is one page. Normally, if you want to create multiple pages, you could create a div and then add a data role equals page. And we need to close that div out here. I also like to put in comments that say like, hey, this is the end of a page. So we'll close that out. Whenever you start doing jQuery mobile, you'll have a lot of these divs. Um, so it's nice to put in a comment. Okay, so now that is one page. And I'm going to copy like all this code right here. And I'll just paste it again. So now I have two copies of that page. I'm going to get rid of the article here and also the footer, right? So we have essentially just a data role header uh, for a header section. Notice that it's, this is not showing right now. So this is going to be our second page. And our second page is going to have an ID of doc for the doc page. And we'll also create a page for the gummies. So go gummies. Notice that when we created these links, we're actually linking to a pound dog and a pound gummies. That's actually going to take this page over to these two other pages that we've set up just by assigning them a data role and assigning them an ID of whatever we want to go to. So let's go ahead and put in a dog here and down here we'll put gummy bears, gummy bears. And somebody told me this is not a pin, Dober, Doberman Pinscher, that this is a Chihuahua. I don't really know about dogs that much. So, so let me go ahead and click and you'll see that right now this page is showing dog. That's great. I'm going to hit command arrow left to bring it back. I have no navigation on that secondary page, so I definitely need to fix that. Now I need to add navigation. And I told you that if we add a href tag here and we go to another page, then it'll add a button, right? So if we click on this right here, see the button already starting to appear. Now, where do I need to go? I need to go to this main page. I added a div data role page here, but I need to add an ID for this page. And this page is going to be photos. You could call it home or photos or whatever. And then down here, when we link back to it, we'll just need to link back to photos. And we can put in photos here and you can see there's a button there that now we can click and go back to the other page. So definitely want that on this other page. It actually doesn't matter where you put this link if you put it at the top. It's because it's, there's only one of them, it automatically lets you, um, it automatically puts it to the left. And so we want to do, let's say we do a data, I, data icon equals, we could do home here, grid if we want it to look like a grid. We can also get rid of the text by doing data icon position 
So you can actually set the position of the text to be at the top, bottom, left to right of the, of the icon. What we want to do is no text. And that just gives us the grid icon without anything else. So that's cool, but we actually need the photo here. So we'll put in an image tag. And the source is going to be images folder and then doggy.jpg. And that's going to show the picture of the dog, dog, dog picture. Right, and then we want to do this. Oops, we want to do the same thing for this one down here. Now, this time we don't want to wrap it in a data rule content because it would actually indent the photo a little bit. So the other is gummies and okay, gummy bears. So let's check them out. Okay, cool, that looks great. The gummy bears photo doesn't have this nice sort of grid icon, so we need to fix that. And we'll just copy it from here and get rid of this one and paste it right there. That's awesome. Now our photos, they're way too big, so I'm going to go all the way to the top of the page and just paste some style sheet information that is going to resize any image with the class of full screen to the max width and height of 100%. So now I need to add those classes to my images. So cla class, so I'll just do full screen. And now my photo resizes to the size of the window. So let me go ahead and copy and paste that onto our dog picture. Add that class and save it. And I think our application is looking pretty good. So in just a few minutes, I created a list-based app that takes you to another page let you navigate between pages. We have multiple pages on this document, and we even have some really cool filtering functionality that we did by just adding attributes to a simple HTML page. I really love jQuery Mobile. I think it's a great engine for any of your mobile projects, especially if it's something that you want to develop quickly and you don't want to do a lot of very complicated JavaScript.